folks, back on the Boss Man Show here at Ben Holland, Mississippi State Bulldogs going to be in town Saturday to play the Dayton Flyers at State Farm Arena. Uh, you know, the Hoops, Holiday Hoops Classic. Coach Holland, how does it feel in Starkville today, man? Things are great in Starkville. You know, we're excited to come to Atlanta and play against a very good Dayton team and a program that was obviously poised a year ago to be in the Final Four. They were 29-2. and two. Uh, Anthony's done a tremendous job with that program. And, uh, this is a great opportunity for us to play against uh, a good team uh, on a neutral site. We're, we're really sad. When we scheduled this game, we thought we'd have a lot of fans be able to come to the game, but unfortunately they're going to keep it safe. And, uh, you know, there's no complaints from us, actually. I mean, it's just probably a smart thing to do with the way this pandemic's been going here in most recent days and weeks. Uh, but, you know, we're excited about our team. We went three in a row, so we've got a little momentum coming in there now. We missed our, our starting point guard, Iverson Molinar, the first two games of the season, which was really difficult. Uh, and he's played very well in his return. Uh, you know, DJ Stewart and Tolo Smith are the other two players that have been our leading scorers. But we've had a lot of good uh, performances from a bunch of young guys, including uh, Davon Smith, who hails from right there. Uh, in, in the Atlanta area and is a really good player. So I know he's excited to get home and to play, uh, you know, there in front of, you know, family and friends, even though they'll just be on the TV watching them close by. Yeah, playing State from Arena, too. Probably somewhere he's gone to see the Hawks play many a times and getting to play on that court, man, and living a dream for him. A lot of kids here, Coach, love to play down at State Farm. So I know he's really excited about that for sure. Yeah, it's always fun for players to play in the pro arenas. The one thing that always scares me as a coach, and I played a lot of games in Madison Square Garden when I was at the University of Pittsburgh. And when they see that NBA three, they all want to shoot the NBA three, <laughs> yes. but it, which is way further out than you know the college three. It's like, well, go ahead and shoot, you know, where we shoot from, and you know you can get out there, you know, next year. Yes, uh, <laughs> a lot of guys do that, man. They, they want to show I can shoot that NBA three, just like. Yeah. Yeah, since so we play a St. John's, and yeah, you will see those guys are going <laughs> to the guard to keep the line. Is yeah, I'm gonna shoot from the NBA line. Yeah, I would see it all the time. On ESPN Big East games. I remember them, coach. I remember seeing them, man. <laughs> yeah. Yes, indeed. Now, coach, let's go back to March, coach. Um, you was going to Nashville for the tournament, right? And it was my birthday, March 11th. Was my, my, my my birthday. I, was there, I had a birthday party, everything. I guess the Knicks playing the Hawks that night, right? I get a text, and the season's gonna be over. I was coming to Nashville to see you guys play in the tournament up in Nashville. It was canceled. So for you and your team, how was that to go from we're going to play this tournament, maybe go to, maybe, maybe get win this thing here in Nashville, or to the big dance all of a sudden, you to tell your guys it's over, go to Starkville, go home. Yeah. And how I'll, was I'll tell that? you, it, it was incredibly devastating because uh, we were really poised to do something good. You know, we had a double bye. We finished fourth in the league. The top four teams get a double bye. And so we were in a good position in terms of advancing in that tournament and, and really uh, poised to do really well. You know, we had Reggie Perry a year ago, who was a leading rebounder in the SEC and fourth leading scorer, who was drafted by the Brooklyn Nets. It was also a product from Georgia, Thomasville, Georgia. And we had Robert Woodard who uh, was drafted 40th by the Sacramento Kings, signed a guaranteed contract last week. Uh, we had, you know, Tyson Carter, who was the sixth man of the year in the SEC, as voted by the coaches last year, and Nick Weatherspoon, who had a really good campaign as our starting point guard. Those were our four leading scorers. We had a really good team. And it was just, I, I was crying in front of our team, just devastated for them to learn that our season ended. Not only that, that the NC2A, tournament was canceled. So you, it was just, it was over. And, you know, it was hard for everybody across the country. It was just a, a brutal, brutal time. And especially for those seniors, like yes. Tyson, playing in his, you know, last year and uh, had such a tremendous year. And so that's something that will always honestly haunt me. It's like, you know, you will we'll never know what we could have done. Yes. You know, they decided to not allow fans except for four family members for each player. And then at that point, they just cut it off. And, you know, I, I mean, if you look back on it, what we're doing now is no different than then. You know, they just didn't know enough mm -hmm. how we're going to go forward with it. So they'll definitely have an interest rate tournament this year. There's no doubt about that. 
and for your seniors, those guys getting missed that moment that last time hugging you for the last time, coming out hugging the teammates for that last time, off your jersey in the locker room, speaking to the team. And for me, it just hurts to, for me because I know how it is having been an athlete and been having that moment that last time before I went into my career doing radio, right? So, but for those young men, they never had the opportunity. It's always going to be that, that empty feeling in their hearts. Like, I didn't get to have that one last experience with my coaches and my teammates. I agree. I mean, uh, but you know what, though? That's why I was so excited that this year we got a chance to play again. I mean, just the opportunity to be back out there playing basketball, doing the thing these kids love. And they made tremendous sacrifices in the offseason. Some of these guys were working out on outdoor courts because they couldn't even use our facilities. Uh, they, were, they were, you know, going to high school gyms wherever they could. Uh, you know, they were doing everything they could to, to, you know, work on their game and also lift and condition. It's really proud of them. And, uh, you know, uh, they did a tremendous job. And I think the SEC is doing a great job in terms of the testing. We get tested three times a week. I just came in here from getting tested. And uh, so we're really on top of it, you know, keeping our guys safe and trying to do everything possible to, uh, you know, eliminate exposure to COVID as best we can. And, you know, our school, our university, the league is doing a tremendous job in that respect. And the players are having fun. I mean, you know, they, they were devastated last year. And for them to be back out doing what they love uh, is, is really fun for them. Now, Coach, I got I, the grades-wise, Coach, um, going back to that, how was it going from the gear man, go from online, from being in person? I know for me, I'm barely in person. I can't concentrate on the computer to myself, right? So how was that, Jack, just the coach, academic advisors, helping your young men keep their grades up, knowing that, hey, they're back at home in a weird environment, about the structure of study halls and the coaches around them and their advisors. How was academic for that spring semester for, you, for your young men? You know, they had study halls. They just had them online interacting with our, with our tutors. But uh, it was, uh, you know, very difficult. You know, I give our kids a lot of credit. We actually had a really good semester uh, last spring semester, and we just finished our, our semester here, and we had the best academic semester since I've been here. I mean, we had guys that, uh, we, I think we had one player on the entire team that didn't have a 3.0 for the, for the semester. So wow. It's phenomenal. And uh, the player who didn't was in some really tough classes, and I think got a 2.65. So I'm really proud of our guys for what they've accomplished uh, in the classroom as well as on the basketball court. Now, Coach, how do you all use Zoom to keep your young men's mind sharp? I know for me, I'm in my 30s, right? So I, I'm used to adversity, but they're in their 20s, 18 years old, not to do with the pandemic, racial unrest around them. How do you keep your young men's uh, minds fresh and sharp so they don't let this negativity con conquer them and bring them down? You know, we stayed in contact with them, but we also had them here on campus starting mid-June, and uh, we, we could start working with them. The, the strength coach could. We started working with them, I think, in early July uh, on the floor. Uh, but the parents of these kids are the key. I mean, it's always about mom and dad, and uh, that they're the so supportive ones that really help kids get through tough times, and especially something like this. And you know, it's so important for kids to understand that you, know, you might be okay, but if you take it home to grandma and grandpa, and we've seen, you know, I, we had one of our players lost a grandparent to COVID. We have another kid I'm recruiting right now just lost his grandfather to COVID. So many people have been affected by this. There's no one that has been touched by it at this point. And I am so thankful for the vaccine to be rolling out here in the course of these next few weeks and few months. And I will be first in line. As soon as they say I can get my shot, I'm there. I can't wait. You got that right, Coach. You know, I'm looking forward to it as well because, you know, I have asthma. I haven't left Atlanta since March the 15th. So I haven't been anywhere since March the 15th. But now I love to travel, cover games, cover coaches, coach from the practices. I can't do any of that stuff. I'm a, people, I love to be out around people, Coach, and I can't do that. I've been here in, in, back here in, the, in my basement walking around the neighborhood. I want to get out and see games again and see you all in person again. I, I miss that, Coach. I know, and it's, it's going to be great. You know, I think by, I honestly believe by the time we get to August of this coming year, July, August, normalcy will be back. We'll have enough people vaccinated across the country to where it's going to, you know, put, stamp it out for the most part. And uh, I can't wait for that day, you know, where I can get, get back to 
not having to wear a mask everywhere you go because that's what we have to do right now mm-hmm. so they're safe now coach man excuse me man um for as your players and we, we brought back on campus how'd you go about getting them ramped up so they don't have those injuries that nag all your longer hamstring or growing a quad or knee or ankle because you know when the guys have been inactive for so long giving them back in yeah, but our, guy, our guys weren't inactive and again okay. I, I mentioned we got a chance to start having them work out with our strength coach in june Okay. We have the best strength and conditioning and performance coach in the country here at Mississippi State. We have the biggest uh, performance center and weight room for any basketball program in America, NBA or college. Wow. I know and that. This guy is phenomenal, Colin Crane. I'll give you an example. The last three years that he's been here, we haven't had a player miss an SEC regular season game because of injury. Wow. That's unheard of so we're really blessed in so many ways and our guys are, are really good about recovery you know we use cryotherapy when we didn't have covid they get massages twice a week really do a great job eating right and sleeping properly all that goes in to keeping yourself healthy and to peak performance and coach how's it been for you to recruit via zoom I know you don't want to see players in person, their families in person. How has that been to try to recruit via Zoom, bring guys in there? Yeah, you know, it is what it is. You know, when we do it, and you know, it's part of how you communicate now. But I can't wait to get back in the gym and see kids in person. They get a chance to sit down with them and their parents, interact, have them come on our campus. And I don't think they'll probably be allowed to come on campus to probably sometime this summer. Uh, but it is what it is. You know, we just deal with it and do the very best you can do. And like you said, you got a young man from Georgia here on your roster, right here up the road in Loganville there. So talk about how important is recruiting to this part of the country, find those diamonds in the rough here in Atlanta and bring them to Starfield because I know it's easy to drive from I-20 over to Starfield from over here. So talk about how this city of Atlanta and the city of Georgia is good for finding great players. Yeah, well, we, like I said, we just had Reggie Perry leave and go to the NBA out of Thomasville, Georgia. And then Davon Smith was a top 35 player in the country. I mean, he is really, you know, he, he wasn't no diamond in the rough. He's the real deal. Mm-hmm. He's recruited by a lot of big time schools, and we were really blessed to get him. He is a great kid, comes from a wonderful family. Uh, you know, he, he's really, really going to be a, a heck of a player here, very talented. He has a 46 and a half inch vertical. Wow. At six feet tall. So I know, Boss Man, that you can get up. But, uh, Not anymore, coach. <laughs> and a half. Not anymore, coach. <laughs> hey, I, I've succumbed to being lazy and eating food too much, man. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the team. Yes, I have succumbed, coach. I, I have no ability left, man, than just to talk on the radio, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, he can fly. He's a very good, uh, you know, decision maker. Shoots the ball really well. I'm really excited about him. He's going to be special. So uh, no question, Atlanta puts out so many good players. Everybody recruits Atlanta. I had a kid named Jordan Adams when I was head coach at UCLA out of Atlanta, Georgia, that was a first-round draft pick, uh, played in the NBA, went with the Grizzlies, really good player. He played at Oak Hill his senior year, but great player. So I've been blessed. I had a kid named Tony Parker who played uh, out of Atlanta, was a really good player. So, you know, Atlanta's been good to me and uh, has very good coaching at the lower levels. They do a good job developing kids. And that's one of the great things about it. They get good coaching early in their careers. That's one for you, Coach This, What's been your quarantine hobby? I know if I told you off the air, I don't know how to play, how to play the guitar. That's best been my hobby. So how was- I'm a movie buff. I love okay. movies. So all I do is... Like, I, I've seen every Netflix series that you could possibly imagine. All right, Queen of the South, The Punisher. I've seen a bunch of them that I love. Of course, I've seen, you know, Ozarks. And uh, I mean, I, I, I really, really enjoy watching good movies, though. And so I've, I've been uh, sad that I can't go to a movie theater anymore. Uh, and I'm sad for the movie theaters because, you know, they're going to have a hard time coming back. Uh, but at the end of the day, I love watching movies. I love watching film. Uh, and I've really enjoyed that during, you know, the COVID time. That's what I was doing. I, I hear that, Coach. I tell you, man, that, get, that guitar thing, man, it's hard, man. I thought it was easy. I, man, Maria taught me a lesson. You can't just 
pick up and play. You got to really put in, put in some work. So that work I put in, I'm doing it via the Zoom too, Coach. So I'm like, okay, let me follow you what you're doing so I can make sure I get it right. But I'm getting better every week, Coach. I'm getting better, man. Well, that's fun, though. That's a great hobby, too. To play the guitar is special. That's really – and you can do it for the rest of your life. Yep. So I'm looking. I'm glad. I'm keep on getting better, coach. Hope I can come play with some for you guys in the tournament once. I didn't have me as entertainment in between games to play. Hopefully, <laughs> I can have for you guys. <laughs> so who who are you patting your your guitar playing after? Who's your hero? Uh, man, I don't have one yet. I'm just trying to get just kind of get the basics down, coach, so I can maybe be the the, the boss man. But I'll be my own inspiration, <laughs> my own style to it, man. I'm just trying to get good, man, so I can, you know, maybe do backup for somebody one day, because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm done, I've been, I've been in radio for 10 years, coach. I don't know if I'll do it over the rest of my life, but I'm doing it 10 years. I want to find someone to do it outside the radio eventually. So maybe he'd be playing music the rest of my life. Who knows? <laughs> uh, that sounds sweet. You got You know, one thing I tell my players is you got to do what you love to do and you're passionate about. And I've been really blessed as a coach to do something I've loved my whole life. And, and it's so important that for these kids to understand that when they're done playing, they've got to find whatever it is. I wanted to stay in and, and be around basketball as long as I could. And so I've been incredibly blessed. And finding what you love to do and you're passionate about is everything. You got that right, Coach. Like I said, you know, for me, I've been at radio since 2010. You know, I got out of college in 2009, so I've been doing this for the last 10 years of my life. So it, radio's been my life, my whole adult life, man. So I've been, it's been a blessing. Let me tell you a story. When I was an assistant coach at UC Santa Barbara, uh, we had a young little uh, student that became our radio guy there named Jim Rome. Yes, Romy, the jungle. Romy. So Romy, I've known since he's like 19 years old. He's done quite well for himself. Yes, I love Jerome. Rome. He's very irritating. I love him. He's a, a gaucho. I love this. He's a gaucho. Talking. That's my hometown, Santa Barbara. Yes, indeed. Yeah, you got Joe out there now. I remember the Big West. I was a little younger. I watched it with my dad, the Big West out there. So I remember those battles you all have out there with all those teams. The UNLV was out there with you guys as well. Yeah, no, that's what we, we beat UNLV the year they won the national championship in 1990. With Larry Johnson, Stacey Ogman, and Greg Anthony. Those were great times. And that was really a great league then when we had those teams together. We had, you know, like Utah State and Boise State and New Mexico State, UNLV. It was really a heck of a league. You know what, Coach? My dad gets kicked out of this, Coach. My dad gets kicked out of talking to you guys. He, he, he knows you all from, from watching sports. He's like, you, you gonna have on, on your show? I said, yeah, Dad. I, I, he said, my dad gets kicked out. I said, I'm talking to all you coaches. He's watched all his life and seeing his son talks to him. And he's like, son, you, you make me proud every day. <laughs> talking to these guys I watched up and show you when you was a kid. So it's just fun to me, Coach. Well, did you give your dad some love for me. That's nice that he made you stay up and watch those games. Because those games came on like at midnight your time. He would make my mom crazy, Coach. And he would have me up late watching ball with it. <laughs> <laughs> what a great dad. Yes. Uh, you know, Coach, I was at Hawks games, Braves games, Falcons games with my dad. The World Series I was with my dad when we won. I was nine, eight, nine years old. I remember that. When we won it, we just won the So, you know, it's the Indians. I remember that. Fulton County Stadium. So my dad helped me become who I am today, teaching me about sports from yay high to now. He still gives me stuff about old stuff I didn't know about. So, yeah, my dad's like my, my shadow producer almost. <laughs> well, you know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to send your daddy a shirt, man. You're going to have to give me his address. Okay. And I'll, you tell me what size. We'll hook him up with some Mississippi State swag. No doubt, Coach. My dad is several nine years old, Coach. He, he's he's still going strong, man. He loves his sports. He loves it all, man. He's got in my ear, man. <laughs> so That's I'll, great. That's I'll send Matt. What's his, name? What's his name? Jermaine McHenry Sr. Because I'm, I'm the junior, so he's a senior. Okay. That's, that's my right. dad. Jermaine McHenry Sr. I told him about you. He said, Ben Holland, you, I, I, I remember him, son. I sure do. <laughs> so that's my dad funny. loves it, man. That's great. That's awesome. I mean, you know, sports is such a great thing. And you know what? Basketball, and in particular, the March Madness is the greatest sporting event in the entire country every year. It brings more people together from you know, everywhere across this country. I think it galvanizes our country. It's always so fun. Those three weeks are incredibly special. And, uh, you know, basketball is just such a great game. I'm excited for the NBA to get started. You know, we got some new kids in there. 
You know, I've, I've coached 26 guys that have played in the NBA. You know, Russell Westbrook, Kevin Love, great players. You know, Trevor Ariza, Aaron Aflalo, Jordan Farmer, Drew Holiday. A lot of big time guys, and I'm really excited. We, did, we have three guys now from Mississippi State, Quindari Weatherspoon, Reggie Perry, and Robert Woodard now in the NBA. So it's thrilling for me. I love basketball. Coach, this is the best, man, and I'm looking forward to our Hawks here, man. We have some good talent here. A lot of young guys you on our team. Looking forward to it. No, I'll tell you what, they did a good job. I like their draft picks. I like their, what they're doing with their roster. They picked up the shooter from Sacramento Kings. They're doing a really nice job. Yes, I can't wait. We're going to be good again once more. We have three years, three years of a little hard times, but, hey, the Hawks are back, Coach. Back, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach. They never gave up Millsap. You know, giving up Millsap was a mistake. That yes. Guy was Paul was my guy, too. I miss Paul Millsap. I hate he's in Denver, man. That was my guy. Him, Al Horford, Kyle Corver, Jeff Teague, and those guys, man. Jamari Carroll. Man, those guys were the – I love – I miss team. all those guys. I miss that was all a heck guys. of a team, man. Yeah, yeah but man. They'll, 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 they, it looks like they got something going again. I like the kid they got from the Houston Rockets. You know the center that they have in there now. Pink Capella. Yeah, I mean they're, they're going to be good. 